unfortunately, that is actually the end of the Portuguese that I know, uh, maybe next time. But uh, I'm really excited to be here. It's very inspiring to me to see all of you bright and early on a Saturday morning. Um, so if you're excited to get started like I am, cheer, yell Dev Fest. <laughs> Woo! Um, there's a lot of great talks today. I think there's over 25 sessions and five different tracks. Um, everything from artificial intelligence to UX and everything in between. Uh, but first, I'm actually going to talk to you about what I do in the Google New York office. Uh, I am an engineer in G Suite, and I work in developer relations. So uh, we're focused on all of the ways that developers, just like you, use our services. So uh, when we talk about G Suite, we're talking about all these apps that you use every single day, you know, like Gmail, Calendar, Drive, Sheets. Do, do you use those, you know, at least once a week? Okay, great. <laughs> Did you know that all of these products actually have APIs? Yeah. yeah. So we're going to go through some code samples, some examples of what you can do using the G Suite APIs. But first, who am I? What am I doing here? So uh, like I said, my name is Anu. I work in Google New York, but I have actually also worked at uh, headquarters in Mountain View and in our San Francisco office. Uh, I'm about to hit my five-year anniversary at Google. Before that, I was working as a software engineer in cloud infrastructure on, and on Android and Google Play services. So I've been at a lot of different parts of the company. If you have any questions about you know, any of those pieces, come find me after this talk. I'll be here all day, and I'm really excited. Um, and then a fun note, uh, I actually am from Houston, Texas. Uh, that's where my family is. That's where I grew up. And that is also where Beyonce is from. <laughs> and um, with all of you here today, it, it makes me feel like Beyonce. So let's quickly go over the agenda and actually get started. So the first thing is we're going to introduce G Suite and these APIs. Then we'll go through uh, some REST APIs. Uh, today I'll be showing some Python code. And then we will talk about Google Apps Script. Has anyone used Apps Script before? Cool. Uh, it looks pretty close to JavaScript, so don't worry. Um, it's going to go fine. And then we'll wrap up. So first, the G Suite API. Uh, typically, when we talk about G Suite, we're actually talking about people, you know, who pay to have their own domains. But, you know, you, anyone can use these APIs. I can use them with a G Suite account, or I can use them with my personal Gmail account. So uh, these APIs are really easy to get started with, and, you know, I encourage you to go try them out today. Uh, I focus on doc sheets and slides in the create section, but uh, I'm sure you recognize some of the other icons. We already mentioned, you know, calendar and drive. Uh, if there's any IT admins here, if you are using G Suite at work, there's even uh, APIs to automate IT administration. So G Suite is actually part of the Google Cloud family. Uh, Google Cloud is both GCP and G Suite. We typically think of GCP as the infrastructure, right? And then G Suite, you know, maybe we think it's just for the end user. But it's not. There is actually something in between called the G Suite developer experience. And uh, it's, a pretty, it's pretty cool. Uh, you can actually be the glue in between these two worlds. You know, Maybe you have some stuff on GCP, and you want to share it with everyone, not only the engineers that you work with. You know, Maybe I have a lot of data in BigQuery. I can actually write some code to uh, put it into a sheet. Maybe I want to make some charts and share it. Since this is all in the same uh, family of APIs, you use the same identity, the same authentication, you control uh, all your services in the same place. So today I want to inspire you to find ways to either you know, analyze data better or organize your information and you know, make it more presentable and share it. So you can use G Suite to uh, work better at your job or you know, help you study better at school. OK, so the REST APIs. This is what we think of when we think of traditional APIs, right? So let's start with the standard request response workflow. So every API call that you're going to make using G Suite is going to look like this. Uh, 
First, you're gonna craft your request. Maybe I'm asking Drive for a file. So I'm going to put that file ID into my request. Uh, we're gonna you know, wrap it up in some JSON and send it over. Uh, since we know that G Suite is actually part of, part of Google Cloud, um, we know that that's the same infrastructure running G Suite. Then the service is going to go fetch my file that I wanted, wrap it up in a response, and send it right back to me. Uh, that looks pretty typical. Does that make sense to everyone? Cool. We can actually use these APIs in a number of different client libraries. We have everything from Java to JavaScript, Ruby, Go, PHP, .NET. Uh, today, I will be showing code in Python. Uh, my favorite language is actually Java because it's the first one that I learned. But if you've ever used Java and then another programming language, you know that Java can be pretty long, right? Um, and I have to fit all this code on a slide deck, so we can't use Java. <laughs> Uh, so the first thing that we're going to look at is Google Drive. Uh, so this is a very simple quick start on how to get authenticated and then list files in Google Drive. So let's talk about what we're seeing in the code. Uh, you know, the first four lines are just our imports. Uh, then we have our scope. Do you ever get nervous when uh, you're installing an app and then you know it's asking you for all of these permissions? You know, it wants to know all of your files. It wants to know your shoe size, your credit card info. You know, does that make you a little nervous? Right. Uh, so we actually want to give you fine-grained control access when you're making an application, so your users trust you more. So this is what we call a scope. So if you see that line where it has the scope. We're actually only asking for the metadata um, attached to our drive files because what this code does, it only prints out the title, so I don't even need the contents of the file. Then after that, we do the authentication. So uh, you're gonna get an access token and then you are going to actually create that dialogue flow that says like, yes, you can use my uh, drive metadata. Then that's all the setup. Now the actual interesting code, you know, it's just a few lines. We build our drive service, and then we want to go into our files, and then we want to get those 10 files. So this is what it looks like. Uh, when you run one of these applications for the first time, you're going to get one of those screens right there, and you can see where that scope is. And then that's that's what it looks like. Uh, you can see my presentation is one of the most recent files. Yeah, <laughs> you notice that, good. <laughs> so there's a lot of different scopes that you can use. Uh, we, you know, we want to give you good control on that. Uh, you know, you have everything from full read and write to where you know maybe you only need bits and pieces of the information. Let's look at a few more examples. Um, does anybody ever, you know, archive old files that they have lying around in zip files? You know, maybe you have a bunch of old vacation photos. Uh, well, you can't actually look at those once they're zipped, right? But you could automate uh, something to unzip them and put them in a drive for you. Uh, this code sample is actually at GitHub if you want to, you know, play around with it. Maybe you want to make a commit and make it even better. So, you know, definitely check it out. Uh, another one, so we talked about vacation photos. Uh, you know, maybe you have them lying around on a hard drive, but you know, what's the point of taking all those photos if you don't post them on social media? If you, if you didn't post your photos on Instagram, like, did it, did it even really happen? Um, so you can actually automate making your own photo albums. Uh, the drive metadata gives you a lot of uh, pieces of information, and then also image files also have metadata, so you can combine them and, you know, choose how you want to keep all of your files. So next we're gonna go to Google Slides, which I'm using right now to present to you. This is the Google Slides Quick Start. Uh, it looks pretty similar to the Drive Quick Start that we just did, right? Um, we see the scope up at the top. Then we see the same authentication code. If I were using both of those services in the same script, I would only have to do that once. Then we move down a little bit, and then we see the Slides API. So I build a service, and then I want to get my presentation by the presentation ID, and then I'm just going to list the number of slides in that presentation. Uh, if I were to list it on here, I think I have like 57 slides. 
Uh, here are more scopes for slides. They look like they match the same pattern. There's, there's read, there's write, uh, then you can also use the drive scopes as well to interact with slides. These are all files within the same family, the same way that you interact with all of these in drive. Here is a sample uh, that actually looks at markdown files. Does anybody use markdown files when you're making readmes? Uh, this code actually, you know, it has a system for generating a Google slide from Markdown. So if you put, you know, an H1 title, that'll actually be the title of a new slide. So if you wanted to bulk create slides, you could use this. And that's an animated image of how it works. So yeah, uh, people use the slides API a lot, you know, especially if they, you know, need to make sales reports or they want to make a custom slide deck for each one of their clients. Uh, you can slide, you can use slides to actually pull in all of that data. Uh, using templates is very popular. We can actually replace text uh, from markers in our code. So on the, uh, the title slide, you can see what my template might look like, and then you can actually put in uh, the text that I want and even images. Let's look at what the code actually looks like to do that. So we'd use the replace all text method and then we'd find those key markers that we're looking for and then you know you just do that request and then you have a tailored presentation right then and there. So now on to Google Sheets. This is definitely the most popular application in G Suite. Uh, Sheets, Sheets is a good in-between tool. Maybe you're working with databases. Maybe you just want to put all of your data right there in a sheet. Many of the things that you can do with the UI, you can actually automate with the Sheets API. And more and more features are being added to the Sheets API you know, this year. Let's look at how we might migrate SQL data into a sheet. Uh, since Cheats is a good collaboration tool, anyone can open it. Uh, it's great for sharing content with people of all different backgrounds. Um, I know I personally don't like crafting SQL queries on a terminal just to look at rows of data, so I do prefer looking at data in a sheet. So it's uh, pretty straightforward to write the code. Uh, you can see our query right there. Select star from that table. And with Sheets, you can actually read and write back to that database. You can even do things like format cells. You know, say I wanted to do some crazy color scheme, but I didn't want to go in row by row, you know, changing the colors on like thousands of lines of rows. If you use macros, this is also something where you can do all of your macros and works in Sheets, and then it'll actually generate app script code for you, and then you can play around with that app script code, you know, share it with multiple Sheets, share it with the people that you work with, and just make everything that you're doing faster. So it's not just the editors. Uh, we have APIs for uh, Gmail as well. If you're old school, you might uh, wonder, why do we have a Gmail API if like, the email protocol has been something that we've had for a really long time? Well, the Gmail API will actually let you um, do things like interact with you know, vacation responders. You can even build Gmail add-ons. Uh, these aren't things that are part of the original email protocol, right? Let's look at another quick start. Uh, my email gets pretty full, and then I have a lot of, you know, just kind of one-off emails that aren't necessarily that important, but I do know that the emails that are very important to me, there might be a lot of back and forth on them. So what this does is uh, it actually looks for which emails have more than 10 uh, responses on it, and then it pulls them out because those are probably important. Uh, at work, we have a mailing list where it'll tell you where you know someone might have free food, you know, for you know extra cupcakes from a party. Uh, those emails don't have a lot of responses on them, so they're not actually that important, even though they're important to me. <laughs> so, Calendar is another staple product. I would be lost without it. 
uh, here is another quick sort of recipe that you can do with Calendar. You can create events. Uh, you can see how that event is structured and insert it into your calendar. Uh, maybe you're organizing an event and you want to play around with some of the calendar options and then you know send it out to everyone. Using the API actually gives you more control on how to use this tool. You can make the tool work for you. Okay, so now we're going to talk about AppScript. Um, I have been really enjoying AppScript since I joined G Suite. Uh, you know, I'm more familiar with all the traditional uh, languages, but AppScript makes it really easy to actually work. Uh, with these editors and these products side by side. And it is serverless, so it is following the cloud trend. Um, you write app script in an IDE that we provide, and then it actually runs you know, somewhere in a data center. You don't have to worry about provisioning the machine. You don't have to worry about you know, even knowing where it is, what the state is. Uh, all of that is handled under the hood for you. So you know, if that happens to something in your office, you don't have to worry your code is safe. So that's awesome that a few of you have actually used AppScript already. It is a version of JavaScript, so it's a, you know, a full programming language. You can use it for basic scripting. Uh, but the, what's neat about AppScript is that there's actually over 50 built-in libraries for a lot of these products, so docs, uh, even products outside of G Suite, so BigQuery is in there, uh, so is Maps and YouTube. So how do I, how do I find this, this app script if I don't you know, have to deal with anything on my own machine? It's actually been hiding there this whole time. Have you ever looked at the tools menu and seen the script editor? Cool. So it will take you to the script editor, and this is our version of Hello World. Uh, spreadsheet app is how I would call that built-in library for spreadsheet. And then, you know, I, I want to say Hello World in that first cell. And that's how you could do it with only five lines of code. Since I'm calling spreadsheet on that active sheet, I don't even need to know the file ID. Uh, App script, since it knows what you're logged in as, handles all that authentication. I can do this in only, you know, essentially four lines of real code. I'm not going to count the line that has a curly brace, but in Python, this would, you know, take more, and it would take even more code if I was using Java. <laughs> and this uh, IDE, you don't have to only access it through a product like this. You can go to script.google.com. It actually kind of looks like Drive, and you can see all of your scripts. You can check in on them. You can view logs. Uh, you can debug there as well. So what, what's something that you could do that's not just you know something trivial? Uh, that is actually the address for my office in New York, 76 9th Avenue. Uh, let's say I had a spreadsheet full of these addresses. Like maybe I had all of your addresses and then I wanted to send you custom directions to here today. I can actually use the Maps API that is built into AppScript. Um, Maps is you know, part of a different family of APIs, but since it's built in, I also I don't have to worry about any uh, setup. I can just call it from Maps. So we're going to start the same way. I'm going to use the spreadsheet app to look at the sheet that the script is tied to. I'm going to get the address, and then with one line, I can get a map of where that address is. And then what else can I do after that? I can email it out with just only one more line of code. So I have something pretty functional with only you know, a few lines of code right there. Uh, I could have you know, one column for everyone's email address and one column for uh, their physical address, and I could email you know, a custom set of uh, directions so you could all get here bright and early. So I can confirm that is where my office is. Um, and it, it looks like those people in those other images are having a good time, so that's good. <laughs> Uh, let's look at some other examples of app script actually in your editors. Here is an example of uh, using the built-in translation API. So it's called language app. 
uh, you don't have to use App Script, you know, just on its own. You can actually put it as part of the UI. So you can add it to the add-ons menu. You can create your own uh, your own things to click on, or you could actually use it as like this side menu right here. So this would actually help me a lot this week as I'm translating things back and forth between Portuguese. And it looks pretty similar between all of the applications. Here is essentially the same thing in a Google slide. Is Portuguese on there? Oh, yes it is. Okay, good. And uh, these actually, these code samples are up on GitHub uh, if you want to test it out or, you know, use it yourself. So, like I said, App Script is its own scripting language. Um, it's getting faster. They're actually just switching it under the hood to the V8 JavaScript runtime. Uh, but it's very easily accessible, very quick to get started. You just go to the editor and you can start coding. You don't have to worry about any extra setup. So the next product that we're going to talk about is Hangouts Chat. Is anyone using Hangouts Chat right now? Awesome. That's great. Has anyone uh, played? <laughs> oh, great. Um, has anyone played with a, a chat bot yet? Cool. So you can now build Hangout Chat bots, and they're becoming more and more popular. Uh, I'm going to show one that we use that the code is also online for. So this is just a simple uh, voting bot. Uh, sometimes, you know, we use this when we, we all want to go out to lunch together, but, you know, we need to vote to see wherever, you know, the most people want to go. Uh, it's really only a few lines of code, and it actually, you know, it updates the count right in the UI right there. So this is, this is actually one of my favorite integrations. Uh, it's with BigQuery. Does anybody have data in BigQuery? Yeah, so it's one of the, um, the longest available databases in the Google Cloud family. It's been around for a really long time. It's a relational database, so uh, the syntax you use is SQL. You can use BigQuery, which we think of this you know, heavy-duty cloud product, right in your G Suite applications. If you go to the BigQuery website, we actually have a lot of public data sets for you to play around with. Uh, there's a data set that's you know, a lot of GitHub activity. There's some science data sets. Uh, one of the data sets that we use a lot for writing demos and samples is we have all of Shakespeare's text uploaded to BigQuery. So I could create a query to figure out what are the most commonly used words in Shakespeare's text. So we can see here, uh, it's just making a query by count, and then it's listing, uh, you know, a lot of these common words that we use a lot, like the. That's not that interesting. But I can actually edit the code to where I would probably want to check what the words are longer, so they're not like these basic words. They become more interesting. Uh, this is what this would look like in Python. But what if I wanted to, you know, pull data into a place where I could share it with other people? I could use sheets and slides. Uh, here, I can actually put that data in there and then, you know, even generate a chart. So what would that look like? We have here, I could use the Sheets API to pull it into a sheet. Uh, we showed Python earlier, but there is a built-in BigQuery service for you to do that. And then with the Sheets API, we can go ahead and create a chart and then drop that chart into our slide deck. And there's lots of different chart types. Uh, we're showing off column charts, but you can do pie charts, uh, scatter plots. Uh, if you're working with data analysis, you know, it can become easier to pull all this data in and sort of make it more readable for everyone else. So, Maybe you go home and you write a really cool application that you're very excited about. You can actually publish it to the G Suite Marketplace. And what's pretty cool about the G Suite Marketplace is that, you know, unlike the App Store or the Play Store, uh, when one person downloads your app, that's, that's one install. But um, say you write something that, you know, really helps, you know, a school or a hospital or a 
company and then they buy it or download it, you could get you know hundreds of more users just with one install. So this is the you know the full cycle from you know when you might start something in AppScript to when you might publish it. So here is where to get started. Um, I will be available all day if you want to see any of the demos that I have on my laptop. Uh, here are the code labs. And if you have any questions about them, if you've done them before, or you have any suggestions, please let me know. And I will actually tweet out all this content later today. Obrigado.